Hey YouTubers, it's your girl <laughs> coming at you here. Like always, you guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day, evening or night. <laughs> um, so we are gonna do another Tuesday, Wednesday special crime case. Um, the case that we are gonna be talking about, you guys, is the body on Summerton Beach. Um. Also, guys, shirt for you. I'm gonna start wearing masks now. <laughs> I keep on having um, um people talk, appearances. So, um, for now on, you guys, I'll be wearing a mask and talk to you guys. Um, which I'm fine with wearing masks. It's no big deal. Um. And, uh, no, everything's great. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm fine. Look at me. Like, what? Also, in these videos, too, there are going to be warnings about, um, you got to be discreet because there is violence and, um, uh, sexual contact in these crimes and these unsolved cases, um, as well. So, let's begin, you guys. So, the body of Summer Beach, uh, they were certainly were baffled through, um, this is from uh, South Australia in December 1948. Gotta make sure you get your facts straight. Or numbers. Um, we still, like, they did not know the identity um, of the man. Uh, they had no real idea what killed him and cannot even be certain whether his death was murder or had heart, fr heart failure or suicide. Um, but they were suspecting po poisoning. Um, so what happened was so multiple couples in theory so this man was laying out in the sun, just, you know, propped up, um, and there were multiple people that walked by, by the scene, um, one, one, uh, couple, uh, thought he had a good, like, had a drink, or, um, he was just laying there in the sun, and, and, and they don't, Back then, uh, people did not, um, was walking toward him to see because there was something, uh, the next time a different couple, um, uh, thought something different. One thought that there, he was smoking a cigarette, another one was thinking that he was, you know, um, just doing, um, something else, um. So, this case here was like nothing, like, all theories. There were so many theories about, uh, this case. Um. Um. It revealed, though, that the corpse, uh, pupils were dilated, uh, dilated or smaller than normal when they brought the, uh, body back. Um. Uh, that had... Uh, ran down like sweat, like ran down the corpse, um, ran down the mouth, and he was probably unable, he wasn't, I mean, like, he wasn't un uh, unable to swallow. Um, his spleen, um, uh, he had a large form, forearm, so his muscles were all like, Different, like, uh, his form was about three times normal size, uh, and liver was distant, and um, there's blood. Um, and then, and then they took all of the stuff. Like all the belongings, um, 
um, uh, that were like spread out on the table. He had tickets were spread out on the uh, from the beach. Um, a pack of chewing gum. Some matches, two combs, a pack of army club cigarettes containing seven cigarettes of another. It's a, there was an expensive brand back in the day. Cantus? Uh, Cantus? Sorry if I can't pronounce the line. But, you guys, there was no wallet, no cash, no ID um, to. To get the um, identification of this man. So that's what we're trying to do. We were trying to figure out who this man was. And, um, back then. Um, the 12th detective sent um, went to the, the real station. And um, they found the brown suitcase. That has been um uh, was in the clock room there was um it was on November thirtieth with the name Ken Kane or the Tian briefcase. Um but the police knew they did some detective work and they thought that that wasn't his real name. Maybe last name, maybe the middle name, we don't know. Um so I was going through all the, uh, lots of, uh, reading on it, uh, just not, um, there was an expert, um, a professor, a, polit a pathologist, at the study of, like, chemicals, um, at the university, and this is in Australia, um, to re-examine the corpse of the man's possessions. In April, four months after the discovery of the body, the uh, search produced a final piece of evidence, one that would be proven to the most baffling of all. Discovered a small pocket sewn into the wrist, the wristband. Um, of the trousers. Previously, examiners have missed it in several accounts of the case have referred to it as a secret pocket. Uh, but it seems that they have intended to hold a fab uh, watch inside. Tightly rolled was a, a minute scrap of paper which opened up to contain two words in, in printed script. The Fred read uh, Tama should type of food. It's it's in a different language. It's um Persian Persian, Persian phrase. So in this one, they're talking about a theory, a secret pocket. Um, uh, a secret pocket is like something hidden. So I think of like a. Uh, they thought it was probably like, he's probably like a spy, or a, back in the day, or a secret agent, or, um, and then other people had theory that this case is about love, because he bought two tickets, and he, maybe he was going, maybe he had a secret mission, maybe he found, um, found love, and he wanted to, He wanted to, um, just find the one that he loved. Maybe his mission was the mission of the heart. And, um, and he was looking. Uh, also, you guys, with the, the, um, the, Pathologic, uh, the professor, uh, because also in the um, autopsy, they thought that um, uh, even though it wasn't shown, he was probably poisoned. Uh, this rare glucose. Um, 
um, African plants. Historically, it was used by a little known uh, Fumwam, a tribe to poison arrows. Uh, this other guy found out that it was a, a type of uh, rare poison. And then he had two other, um, he wouldn't release the information on the internet, so he wrote down the names of the, um, poisons that he thought that, um, would be the name and gave it to the guy and said, will you read this, uh, when there's nobody around. By January 11th, the South Australia police had investigate and dismissed pretty much every lead they had. I can't remember. Um, I read through so many notes. I don't remember if the reason why they dismissed everything at the time. Um, also, back to the um, the um, the Persian phrase. Um, it also means the end, and it was a phrase by a rare New Ze uh, Zealand. Uh, Sorry, Z New Zealand. It's um, it's a book. I can't pronounce these other languages' names. It's a little too difficult, you guys. I'm sorry if I can't say it right. But it was like it's a poetry book. Um, the um police report for. The advisor recognized the words as Persian and telephoned the police to, to suggest they obtained a copy of the book of poetry. This work, written in the 12th century, had become popular in Australia during the war years. Much loved translations. Two libraries, publishers, and bookshops filled to find matches and fancy type. At least it was way possible however they said that the words as several times in the book. So it was it's a poem. But there is like an, a meaning, like a meaningful um a meaningful phrase. So this case was on December 1st, 1948, when researchers now say that they um, South Australian academics claim that they have found the identity of the man, um, but I don't know if I should say it, um, because on one, um, so on one site, it says not to say anything, um, you know, to respect others' wishes, and then there's other, um, sites that had the same information that they actually put on the site, so I am a little reluctant to, um, share the rest of it, um, but... All I can say, as this person, um, without saying the name, uh, who believes that he is 43 years old, he was an electric, electric, an engineer from Melbourne, um, finally provided answers in one of the Australia's most infamous cold cases. For 73 years, the identity of a well-dressed man found slumped by the seawall of, so, uh, of South of Australia in 1948 has been a mystery. Leaving room um, 
he simply was known. Uh, he was found without documents, and the labels ripped from his clothes with the Cold War as a backdrop. With the Cold War, uh, with rumors and theories around the world, more than several decades later, DNA technology have combined to finally crack the case. In this Australian story, the southern the man relatives to speak the first time about how they became involved in the mystery and given identify the man's name. Now, to respect, I'm going to respect. Uh, the people's wishes and the family and hold off on the rest of the information you guys because that's their that's their story to tell um I just wanted to get to know a little bit of the background of this unsolved case And like I say in most of my videos, I don't want to, um, I'm not, you know, I can't even speak right today, you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Not try to offend anyone, and what I say on here is what I've learned, like, what I learned, what I research it on the web and I am really respectful when it comes to people and their privacy. I respect that. Um, I'm going to end this video here you guys. Um, if you like any of my videos, hit the like button you guys. And for upcoming amazing videos, and for new um, true crime specials on Tuesdays and Wednesdays that you don't want to miss, subscribe to your girl here. And and on the plus side, you can hang out with your girl and listen to true crime. Sit back, vibe with me. Just vibe. <laughs> We're just vibing today. <laughs> I appreciate all of you guys, all of you guys so much. And thank you guys so much um, for hanging out. And um, it means so much to me, you guys. <laughs> anyway, before I go, stay sweet like a girl. <laughs> And you have a fantastic day. See you guys. Have a good day.